everyone. Today we are going to be working with plain figures with equal parts. And if you remember what a plain figure is, it's a flat shape. And um, also, you've learned about equal parts whenever we talked about fractions and when we divide things up. Well, today we're going to divide some figures and we're going to divide them into equal parts, just like that. And then we're also going to label them. All right, so let's take a look at this first square, which I have right here. Okay, this square. Um, I'm going to divide this square here into, uh, let's do four equal parts. So I'm gonna divide it down the middle. Now, okay, now my parts might not be the best. I'm gonna try to get them as equal as I can. It's not too bad. Okay, so that is into four equal parts. Now the next step is to label these parts. So because there are four parts, that means that each part is going to have the four underneath it, so it's a, which represents fourths. Okay, so each part would be one fourth. This piece is one fourth. This next piece I'm labeling is one fourth. The, this piece now that I'm labeling is one fourth, and this last piece that I'm labeling is one fourth of the square. Okay, so the other thing we need to talk about is how you can divide a shape in different ways using the same number of parts. So for this square, we still want to do four parts, just like we did before. I also want to divide this third square here into four parts. Okay, so let's look at this one first. We already divided it in four parts up and down. This time I'm going to divide it into fourths going across. I'm going to try to make them as equal as I can. All right. They also need to be labeled. That piece is one fourth of the square. This second piece is one fourth of the square. This third piece is one fourth. And the last piece is one fourth of the square. Now, can you think of one other way that we can divide this square into four equal parts? Think about it for a second. Okay. Well, you could also divide it like this. I'm trying to get this line pretty straight. All right, so that gives you four equal parts. They would also, each piece would also be one fourth of the square. So I'm going to label each piece. And there you go. And that's what we're doing today. But I do need to talk to you about one more thing. A thing called tessellations. Now tessellations is a pattern of shapes that repeats, but there are no gaps or overlaps. Okay, so you can see triangles here, correct? You have an upright triangle, an upside down, an upright, an upside down, and an upright, and they are touching. Their sides are all touching. There are no gaps. There are no overlaps. That is a tessellation. So do you think that circles could be used to make a tessellation? Let's find out. Let me draw a circle. I'm going to put another circle beside that one. Another one beside that one. Since we did one, two, three, four, five triangles on the top, we'll do five circles on the bottom here. One, two, three, four, and five. Is that a tessellation? If you said no, you are correct, because if you look here, oh, here's a gap here, there's a gap here, a gap here, and a gap here, and so forth. So because there are gaps, 
circles cannot create tess tessellations. But I'm also going to show you by drawing circles, like if we put a couple circles together like this, like almost like you're stacking marbles. If you look, see, there are still gaps in here where air could get in there. So this is not creating a tessellation. So in order for a tessellation to happen, it has to be where the shapes are absolutely touching each other the whole way up or down or across, and there are no gaps and no overlaps. Okay, with that being said, let's take a look at our workbook page 251. We're going to start dividing and naming our shapes, shape pieces here. So get your workbook page, pause the video. All right, now that you have your workbook page, let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to use my red so you can see it really, really well. So the directions say, write the name of the plane figure and then partition to show equal parts. Partition just means divide it up. Then label each part. So we actually have three steps we need to do. So let's look at the first step. Write the name of the plane figure. Well, what is the name of this figure? How many sides and angles does it have? If you said five, then we know it is a pentagon. All right, that step is done. Now let's do step two. We're going to partition to show the equal parts. All right, so they, they help us out with these dots here. Do you see all these dots? Okay, we're going to connect those. So let's just start from the middle and radiate outward, dot to dot, like that. Now we should have five equal parts. And now, step three, label each part. So because we have five pieces total, that means each piece is going to be one piece out of five. So it'll be one-fifth. on each piece. And that's all we're doing. Okay, pause the video and you do number two and number three. Okay, so let's see what you got. Let's go ahead and connect the dots. Should look something like this. And Each space, make sure that you put one sixth. Okay, and the name is a hexagon. And this last shape is the octagon. All right, okay. So for numbers four and five, you're going to partition to show the same number of equal parts, but another way. They do give you the dots to help you, but you have to think about how you are connecting those dots because each, each part has to be equal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for number four, can we do this? Would that make four equal parts? No, because this is way small over here. So is this end, and then this is large, and there's really only three parts. So that isn't going to work. So we have to connect the dots this way. Now, even though they crisscross in the middle, they are different because the crisscross part has been moved. 
So it's more up and down and straight across than the other one. The other one forms an X. So that does make it different. Okay, now let's look at number five. They cut the rectangle up and down. So now we can cut it across like that. Okay, now for number six, you have four squares. They do give you dots to help you out. Pause the video, you do those, and then we'll check our answers. Okay, it's time to check your answers. So compare yours with what I have on the screen for number six. And do you see the special one at the end? Do you remember what that is called? Because look, it made these triangles. Actually, there are all of these, really, are tessellations. But what I meant was we use those triangles together in my example of tessellation. And there it is, that last square. It looks like that one here. Somewhat, anyway. <laughs> but those are all tessellations, really. All right, let's take a look. At number seven are the four figures all the same size and shape what do you think yes or no yes let's put yes number eight each figure is partitioned into fourths are the fourths in each figure all the same size and shape what do you think yes they are and the last question, number nine, are the 16 fourths all the same shape? And what they mean by the 16 fourths is there are four here, there are four there, four on this square, and four on that square. So if you add those all together, there's 16 individual pieces. That's what they mean. So are there 16 fourths all the same shape? No, some are squares, like this one here made squares. This one made triangles. This one here made rectangles. And then we have another triangles here. So no, all the pieces are not the same shape. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to take what you've learned Complete the back of this page, page 252, and you need to complete the front page of your homework page, which is page 249, and then turn them in. Until next time.